in Pharmaco Dynamics. What the meaning of the Pharmaco Dynamics? Is the study the biochemical and physiological effect of the drug in certain period of time? It can describe as what the drug does to the body. Pharmaco Dynamics can what the body may do to the drug and what the drug do to the body. Then we will talk about drug receptors, effect of the drug on the receptor, what are the responses of the drug uh, when they are binding to these receptors. And also to improve the toxicity and the adverse effect of the drug. Generally speaking, the pharmacodynamic describes the action of the drug in the body, the influence of drug concentration and the magnitude of the response of the relationship between Even the action of the drug on the body, the influence, the feeling of the camera, me and the man in the region. And the one that's seen and the man that's seen and the one 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 that's seen and that's specialized for the target macromolecule. The receptors, they are the target macromolecule present on the cell surface or within the cell. Most of the drug, the receptor, they are on the cell surface. Some of them are within the cell. So the drug concentration with the receptor complex initiates alteration in the molecular and the molecular activity of the cell by a process called transduction. So the drug will expand to the receptor, it will produce what we call the drug 2 receptor complex. This complex will produce certain activity, it depends on that concentration of the drug, and so the number of these complexes to produce certain effect, and when the drug binds to that receptor, it will produce the complexes which is proportional, directly proportional to the activity that is produced by a signal transduction. In general, the receptor, this is a model of the receptor, and this is what we call the binding site of that receptor. So the receptor <coughs> is unoccupied has a certain shape and a certain uh, molecular, uh, it is inert. That means it will not produce any, any, any activity because there is no drug to bind to that binding site. But when there is a drug, the drug will bind to its binding site. We call the place where the drug will be uh, attached to the binding site. So the drug will bind to that binding site, then there will be uh, structural and conformational changes of that receptor when the drug binds to it. That means these, the receptor, the unoccupied is inactive. But when, but when the drug is binded to that receptor, it will be activated. After activation of that receptor, by binding of that drug, according to the concentration of that drug, there will be signal transduction. This is the signal transduction. It will followed by biological response according to the activity of that drug. Agonist, antagonist, or partial agonist. So the mechanism, in general, for any drug to bind to any receptor, it may be physical. Physical, that means <coughs> the drug can produce the therapeutic response, that means the biological effect, the biological effect, because of the physical property of that drug. For example, the many terminal form of the uh, sugars that use as a diuretic because it will increase the osmotic pressure in the uh, uh, in the blood and it will increase the water out of the body and it will be a diuretic effect. It is a weak diuretic, but in general speaking, it will produce according to its physical activity, which is the osmolarity. So there is no binding to a certain receptor. There is no binding to any uh, uh, enzyme or uh, uh, macromolecule, maybe protein or enzyme. There is only physical activity without any receptor. Or there should be sometimes some simple chemical reaction. <coughs> the drug may be or may act through a chemical reaction, uh, such as the gastric antacid, because the antacid they are weak, uh, basic drug, that neutralizes the stomach acidity with a base. So, if we want to treat the acid, hyperacidity or the heart when we give the patient some antacid, the antacid of weak acid, that they interact with the uh, weak base, uh, weak basic compound that will interact with the high acidity, 
in the uh, stomach, it will uh, produce salt and water. This will uh, neutralize the acidity and will remove the heartburn of in that patient. Also, the other example, <coughs> some metals to uh, remove them from the body or to decrease their toxicity, there is what we call chelating agent or the chelating agent. That the, these compounds will interact with these uh, metals or compounds that are stably charged or if the charge have certain uh, plus two, plus three or minus two, minus three, they will create them that they will interact to them and they will get or remove it from the body. The knee, these are uh, what we call uh, secondary processes, how the drug will produce its action, but mainly, and mainly the drugs are used receptor for their activity. So why do a different receptor and causes a biological response? The drug will go uh, inside the body or inside the body. Then it will, uh, after absorption, it will be distributed. When it's distributed, it will attach to certain binding site in a certain receptor to produce a certain activity or biological activity following the interaction between the drug and the receptor. After binding of the drug with its receptor, there will be what we call signal transduction. The drug acts as a signal and their receptor as a signal detector. The you can imagine that the drug will bind to its receptor, then there will be a signal, and these sig the signals will be amplified, and then it will be followed by a certain biological activity. Receptors can use their recognition of a bound agonist by initiating a series of reactions that ultimately result in a specific intracellular resource. We can the normal things in the like hormones, neurotransmitters. And the normal compound in our body, or the polyphenol compound in our body, they are what we call agos. That means what is the natural uh, biological activity that is produced by that compound which binds to its receptor. So the receptor is found in our body to attach to that agos compound. The agos compound will produce certain activity. This compound which activates that receptor and produces the biological activity is called a mist. Any compound will come to, uh, inside the body and produce the same effect as that uh, agonist, it will be called agonist also. So the agonist refer to a naturally occurring small molecular or a drug that bind to a site on a receptor protein and activate it. So the compound will bind to the binding site, then it will produce a certain activity and activate that receptor. That compound will be called agonist. After binding of the agonist to its binding site in that receptor, second messenger of receptor will occur are part of the cascade of events that translate agonist binding into the cellular So, the, uh, uh, following the interaction of agonist to its binding site in the receptor, there will be many uh, 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 cellular response. It will be uh, produced by what we call second messenger or effector. The drug receptor complex cells have many different types of receptor, each of which is specific for particular agonist and produce a unique response. Most of the drug it will uh, uh, has its own receptor, and most of the receptor has its own agonist, but it's uh, not always the uh, same. So one compound can bind to more than one receptor, and the same receptor can bind to more than one compound. After binding, there will be a unique response. For example, the cardiac cells membrane, they contain what we call beta receptor. This is a adrenergic receptor. This is what we call sympathetic receptor, beta, and there's beta 1 and beta 4. That's one and respond to epinephrine and norepinephrine. Norepinephrine is not adrenaline, the same, and epinephrine is the adrenaline. These compounds will bind to the beta receptor in the heart, beta 1, special beta 1, as well the muscle. In the same heart cell, we have two types of receptor, beta receptor, which is sympathetic, and also the muscular receptor, which binds to acetylcholine, is the parasympathetic part of the heart. So there is two different pathways correlate to the heart. And most of the organ in the body, it has sympathetic and parasympathetic uh, receptor. So the drug, it will bind according to uh, its characteristic co uh, chemical compound and Binding features to the uh, receptor is correlated. These different receptor populations and the data act to the heart's vital function. So, heart 
sometimes we need to increase the heart rate, sometimes to decrease the heart rate, to treat the bradycardia by increasing the heart rate, decreasing, decreasing the tachycardia by decreasing the heart rate. How to do that by the acetylcholine to decrease the function of the heart, we call it parasympathetic effect, or by the adrenaline or adrenal, or what we call epinephrine or epinephrine, to the body to the beta uh, beta one receptor to increase the heart functionality. So both of them they control the heart to be in the normal uh, function. The magnitude of the response, uh, the response is proportional to the number of the drug receptor. So the drug will bind certain binding sites, this binding site to certain receptor. The number of the drug that binds to that receptor, it will make what we call the drug receptor complex. This complex, the number of them, and the number of these complex, uh, these complexes increase the activity will be increased. It's a direct proportional between the concentration of the drug, then by the number of the complex between the drug and that receptor, and it will be directly proportional to the biological activity, to the physiological activity, to the pharmacological effect that we want to be produced. This possible concept is closely related to the formation of a complex between enzyme substrates and antigen. Uh, antibody. The same concept uh, of the binding of enzyme and its substrate or the antigen and antibody and the receptor and its drug. There is binding, there is a complex to be formed, and that the number of these uh, complexes will determine the amount of evolution activity will be, that will be produced accordingly. These interactions have many common features, perhaps the most to not what the specificity of the receptor for a given agonist. The ideal case or the most beneficial feature to have for your agonist is to be what selected. What the meaning of selected? That to bind to certain receptor and only to that receptor, not the to another one. This fits happen. That means our uh, agonist is a specific. It will go to certain receptor, not to the others. But this is not the ideal case, and it's not the. Uh, uh, Real things that maybe the same agonist will bind to more than one receptor. This will produce what we call the toxicity, the adverse effect of the drug, and beside there, what a biological effect or pharmacological effect. So, most of the uh, agonists are what we uh, they are specific, that means selective, but it's not the in all the conditions. Most receptors are named for their agonists that interact best with it. The receptor of histamine is called histamine receptor. There is many receptors, many neurotransmitters, many hormones that can bind to that receptor. If histamine binds to its receptor, we call that receptor histamine receptor. If adrenaline binds to the receptor, we saw, call this adrenergic receptor. If acetylcholine binds to the receptor, we call it cholinergic receptor. If whatever it can be named after what their uh, substrate or after the uh, natural agonist that point to. How the receptor will deal with the binding of, with or binding with uh, its agonist. We should know that the agonists are natural compounds found in the body, that they are found in the body and they produce the biological activity by binding the binding site of that receptor to produce the complex, and the number of complex will determine the amount or the magnitude of the biological response. The biological response may be decreasing blood sugar, may be uh, decreasing the uh, uh, blood pressure, whatever the biological, the biological activity. In general, <coughs> the receptor is a certain compound. Mostly it's a protein and a macromolecule, and mostly it's a protein. This protein, it has two stages. stages. One is active and the other is inactive. One is high energy, one is with lower energy. Most of the compounds, they tend to be in the lower state of energy. That means they uh, uh, want to decrease their level of energy. So, the system exists in the two, in the least two stages, inactive, but the meaning of inactive, that means binding any compound with the receptor in this state, it will not produce any activity. This is the meaning of inactive state of the receptor. Otherwise, they will be called active R star, that is the reversible equilibrium with one another, usually favoring the inactive state. 
So there is R and R star, two stated, uh, states, states of the receptor. One of them is the active R star, and the R is inactive. There's a reversible conformation of changes between R and R star, and always the receptor like to be in the R state, that means the inactive form. This is the unoccupied receptor. Binding of agonist, there's an agonist in, uh, around the binding site, cause the equilibrium shift from the inactive to active. That means, in other words, that the agonist will activate the receptor. So most of the time, the receptor is in its inactive form, in its inactive form, but when there is an agonist in the media, or around it, or bind to its binding site, it will transfer, transfer it from R, which is the inactive form of the receptor, to R star, which is the active form, to produce the biological. That means the receptor will not produce any biological activity if it stays in the R state, which is the R state, the inactive form, that is energy form. There is another term, agonist means compound, bind to the binding site of the receptor to produce a biological activity. But the opposite is the antagonist, which is a compound also, will occupy the same, mostly the same binding site in the same receptor, but it will inactivate that receptor. It will not produce a certain activity uh, of that receptor. The antagonist occupy the receptor, but do not increase the fraction of R star and destabilize the receptor in the inactivity. This explains how the agonist and the agonist, both of them, mostly, most of the time they are similar in structure, but they are uh, different, uh, that the antagonist is more lipophilic, but most of the time they have the same functionality, the same topological features, but if agonist bind to the receptor, it will activate the receptor. But antagonist, when it's bind to the same receptor, it will inactivate. What is the explanation of that? that the transformation of the receptor from the active to inactive form. And the agonist, again, agonist will transform, transfer the receptor from the R, the inactive form, to the R star, the active form, the more actively form of the receptor. The opposite with the antagonist is bind, or uh, when the uh, antagonist binds to what? to the receptor. The antagonist will transfer, transfer the receptor from the R star to R. That means inactivate that receptor. When there is inactivation, that means the receptor will not produce its biological activity. Some drugs, they call it partial agonists. There's three types. Agonist, antagonist, and partial agonist. Agonist transfer from R to R star. Antagonist from R star to R. But what about the Partial antagonist for similar shift in equilibrium from R to R star, it will, it will activate the receptor, but the fraction of R star is this than that caused by the agonist. There will be a transfer from the R to the R star, from the inactive to the active form. Transformation, it's uh, sometime uh, in the, uh, what we call the transformation, and the receptor will activate it. But the percent of the receptor which will be activated is less than that in the full agonist. There is full agonist, partial. It's the agonist, full agonist, partial agonist, and antagonist. It depends on the fractions of the uh, R star that will be produced. If it's zero, it will be antagonist. If it's 100 percent, it will be full agonist. If it's between zero and 100 percent, it will be partial agonist. The magnitude of the biological activity is directly related to the fraction of the R star. If the, uh, the uh, chemical compound or the drug transfer the R to R star, that means it will activate it. All the receptors are transformed 100%, it will be what agonist or for agonist, but if less than 100% and more than zero, it will be partial agonist. If it's none of them is transformed from R to R star, it's an antagonist. Agonist, antagonist, and partial agonist are example of them. Always we start when. They will, if it's active, 
it can transform it to inactive, but most of the time it will stabilize it. It will stabilize it in the inactive form. Agonist, antagonist, and partial agonist. In the drug discovery, when they began to discover a certain drug, they call these compound ligands, any compound that can bind to a certain receptor, we call it ligand. Regardless of their effect, maybe agonist to produce the activity, partial agonist to produce the activity is then uh, the full activity, or antagonist without any activity, or then we call them ligands that bind to the activation site of the receptor. The major receptor families, pharmacology defined the receptor as any biological molecule to which a drug binds and produces a mineral response. In pharmacology, the receptor is a macromolecule in the body that the drug will bind to, then it will produce the biological activity. Thus, the receptor may be enzyme, like the acid structure of protein can act as a receptor for the uh, or endogenous numbers. The enzyme, sometimes the receptor is an enzyme, or an acrylic acid, or structural protein. Most of the time, they are a macromolecule of a protein that will bind to that drug to produce the certain activity. Most of these receptor is uh, a receptor for the agonist, uh, endogenous agonist form. The richest source of the aromatic derivatives are molecules are protein. The most of most of our receptors are what they are protein. Even the enzyme are protein that transduce extracellular signal into intracellular response. We will see most of the receptor, most most of the receptor, they are extracellular. So the drug will bind to the extracellular part, but the activity will be transferred to the intracellular activity, and this is done by what the receptor. There are four types, main type of the families of receptors. First one, the first one is ligand gated ion channel, G protein, coupled protein. This is the most popular one, and most of the drug bound is uh, around to these uh, type of receptors, enzyme linked receptor and intracellular receptor. The type of receptor a ligand interacts with depends on the chemical nature of the ligand. Well, the first factor that affects where that this drug will bind is the chemical structure of the anti drug. Hydrophilic ligands interact with the receptors that are found in the cell. The different types of receptors are found in different places. Some are extracellular, this is the major type of receptor, they are extracellular. If a drug is hydrophilic, that means it can't enter the body, it will be around the cells or in the interstitial fluid. This will uh, make that uh, drug concentration increase and they can bind to that receptor, which is the extracellular. But if the drug is very hydrophobic, that drug will enter the membrane and it can go to the intracellular receptors. So the structure of the drug will determine the, ty the type of the receptor that the drug will bind to. In contrast, the hydrophobic ligand intercells through the lipid bilayer of the cell membrane to interact with the receptor found inside the cell. So, to enter the cell, the drug should be highly hydrophobic. If the drug is hydrophilic, highly hydrophilic, it will stay outside the cell in the interstitial fluid. It can bind to the extracellular uh, receptor. Uh, generally, they are the ligand gated ion channels like the cholinergic nicotine receptor, that one with aspirin, or the G protein coupled receptor like alpha and beta adrenaline receptor. This is the cholinergic nicotine receptor that the receptor that bind to aspirin. But alpha and beta adrenergic receptor that the receptor will bind to adrenaline and noradrenaline. Enzyme link receptor example is the insulin receptor. They are a different type intracellular, that means the drug should enter inside the body, uh, inside the cell to yani, the, to enter the cell membrane, then to the cytoplasm, then to the nuclear membrane until it reaches what the uh, receptor intracellular, like the steroidal receptor. 
The first one is the transmembrane, transmembrane ligand gated ion channel, which is uh, the uh, nicotinic receptor. What is the binding site? The extracellular protein portion of the ligand gated ion channel usually contains the ligand binding site. This is the receptor. It's across the membrane, the phosphorylated uh, binding membrane. But the binding site is extracellular. That means that the ligand should be what? Hydrophilic compound to bind to the extracellular part. After binding, this site regulates the shape of the uh, pore through which ions can flow across cellular. After binding of that, like we said, acetylcholine, it will bind to that uh, receptor, which is extracellular, the binding site. And after binding, the result will be opening of the uh, ion channel and it can enter the cell. The channel is usually closed after the receptor is activated. Without binding of that receptor to its binding site, the channel is closed. After binding of the receptor to, uh, of the drug to its receptor, the channel will be open. Which opens the channel briefly for a few milliseconds. Because it's still going is a parasympathetic neurotransmitter. It is uh, responsible for many, many, many responses. So the activity of this compound is all the time is working. So it needs a few milliseconds to happen. A few milliseconds because the heart and the vital organ and all over the body is controlled by the parasympathetic system. Then we get the ion conducted through the, this channel. So, Acetylcholine, for example, will bind to the its binding site and open the ion. According to what the ion is uh, entering the cell, the biological activity will be uh, so. You know, the ion conducting through this channel is receptor mediated diverse function. So the same atoms, the same atoms, for example, acetylcholine will bind to multiple binding sites in different places in. Different places, different biological activity will be produced, uh, including the neurotransmission and cardiac or muscle contractions. It depends what is the uh, ion inside the cell and what is the activity in that place where the uh, uh, agonist, in example, for example, astrocholine, where is it uh, to affect different organs. So the effect of astrocholine in the eye is different from that in the heart or in what the muscle, uh, in the uh, smooth muscles and whatever. So according to the place of that receptor, that receptor, so the receptor will bind the binding site, extracellular, then the activity will be uh, depending on the ion that is, uh, so the change in the membrane potential or ion concentration within the cell will produce a logical activity. Voltage gated. Ion channel may be process ligand binding site. So this type also for calcium channel, uh, also one of these type. So they are extracellular binding site, they are uh, entirely needed to make uh, to produce their biological activities millisecond. And the voltage gating uh, ion channel may be process ligand binding site that can create a channel function. The second type and the most popular type of receptor that the drug binds to is the transmembrane G protein coupled receptor. Transmembrane. Transmembrane, because the membrane, it is what? Seven transmembrane layers. And uh, the binding site is also outside the Membrane, this cellular domain of this receptor contains the ligand binding area. So the drug will bind, or any uh, ligand will bind to that receptor outside that cell. That means in the extracellular space, that means the drug should be water soluble to bind to this uh, binding site. And when the intercellular domain interacts when activated with the G protein or effector. So, one dollar, tag, it's just Huh? Do it. 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 Do it.
situatie. Okay. En dan is het procedure domain of this is a structure contain the legal bonding area and the intracellularly uh, domain interact when activated with G protein or effector. So, the binding site in the middle of the line part. Let us regime, let us regime, it's not going to change. It's not. اللي بيحكي يطلع اذا the uh, compound will bind the binding site in the extracellular and the effect of that drug will be in the uh, domain inside the what they said there are many kinds of the G protein style they are GS stimulatory, GI inhibitory and GQ is the type that binds to certain compound and produce certain messenger, second messenger. But they are all composed of three protein subunits: the alpha, beta, and alpha. We say that alpha, beta, alpha, beta, gamma, three subunits for all the type of the G protein: GS, GI, GQ. The alpha subunit bind guanine triphosphate (GTP) and the alpha and beta subunit anchor the G protein in the cell membrane. So, what's the function? There are two subunits of the this protein: alpha, beta, and gamma. Alpha is for binding for the GTP, and uh, beta and gamma to anchor that protein to the membrane, just anchoring that protein to the binding. This response usually lasts several seconds to minutes. So the activity is longer than the previous type of receptor protein. So the drug will bind to the binding site, which is hysterocellular. Then the function, of the function will be transferred or transferred to the uh, inside the uh, cell. Sometimes the activated effector produce second messenger. That further activates other effector in the cell, causing what we call signal cascade. After the drug is bound here, there will be a cell producing another, so what we call second messenger. This second messenger is responsible for the activity of that compound. For example, the receptor will be unoccupied, that means inactive in the beginning, does not interact with anything. This is hormone or neurotransmitter or whatever uh, endogenous agonist. It will bind to the binding site, which is extracellular of the G protein, this is inactive, all of them are inactive. After the occupied receptor change shape and interact with the GS, this is a stimulatory type, GS release GDP and bind GTP. After binding of the agonist to its binding site, the alpha receptor will bind to the GTP and release GDP, which make the transformation in the alpha subunit. After that, binding of analogous to the receptor increases the GTP binding to the alpha subunit, causing the dissociation of the alpha GTP complex from the beta, uh, because L, uh, beta gamma is for anchoring the one that will be uh, uh, transformed or will move uh, only the alpha subunit. The two complex can be interact with other cellular effector, effector usually an enzyme a protein or an ion channel that are responsible for further uh, action within the cell. After that, alpha receptor now, after binding, the uh, G, uh, alpha subunit will release GTP and bind to GTP. This is will make activation and translocation of the alpha subunit with GTP. It will bind to what? Uh, a second messenger. This is the activation of this act, uh, second messenger is a crucial uh, step to produce the biological activity here, the active adenyl cyclist. The, in the beginning, it was inactive. After binding of alpha receptor, it will be converted to active adenyl cyclist, and it will produce cyclic AP, one of the seven messenger used for, uh, by this receptor to produce the biological activity. After that, the alpha receptor uh, will uh, the activity of GS protein dissociate and activate the adrenal cyclase? This is the step. When hormone is no longer present, that means the drug is not bound because always the binding of the drug to the receptor is a reversible process.
process and it takes only uh, a certain time, not forever. After the hormone or the neurotransmitter or the actress, whatever, uh, it is uh, it's no longer present, the receptor reverts to its resting state. At the end, the alpha will be deactivated and it will rebound to the beta and gamma and the subunit and hydrolyzed to GDP and adrenal cyclase is deactivated. So the process be repeated, the, the, the process will be repeated. When there is no drug, alpha will be deactivated and will bind again to the beta and gamma and adrenal uh, uh, cyclase will be transferred from the active to the inactive and again it is uh, uh, now ready to uh, bind to another uh, new compound. So this is the most important uh, type of the receptor by binding to the extracellular, then activating a second messenger, then producing the logical effect. A common effector. So the GS here, so the GS is type, produce the adrenal cyclase as a type of Activate, uh, when we activate the other cycle, it will produce a uh, cycle A and B, one of the type of second, uh, second messenger. Other types, effector or second messenger activated by GS, uh, by GI, is adrenal cycle which produce second messenger cycle, adrenaline, monophosphate cycle A and B. GQ activates phospholipase C, generated to other second messenger uh, IP3 and DAG. These the three types cycle A and B. IP3, DAG, they are type of second messenger. That means it will uh, uh, transfer the activity and will produce the logical activity inside the cell. DAG and cyclic MB activate different protein kinases uh, within the cell leading to a logical effect. This will be different. The logical effect will be produced from the, these uh, second messenger. IP3, for example, regulate the intracellular free calcium concentration as well as some protein kinases. Different type of second messenger will produce different function and biological activity depending on what type of the second messenger will be produced from that drug according to its, uh, its uh, GI, that means inhibitory, uh, G protein or GS stimulator, G protein or GQ uh, and the equilibrium one. So according to the type of the G protein, the agonist on its five to eight will produce a different business second messenger and a different biological activity will be produced. The other type of we call the enzyme linked receptor. Enzyme linked receptor like the insulin. This family, this is the receptor type, uh, the receptor that binds to insulin. This family of receptor consists of a protein that may form dimers. Dimer, that two part, a uh, similar part. Or multi subunit complex, sometimes two parts, similar or more than two parts. When activated, this receptor undergo conformational chain. The activation uh, activated by the, for example, insulin will activate this receptor, there will be a conformational chain. What do you mean conformational chain? Conformational chain, the shape chain changes resulting in increased systolic enzyme activity. After the activation of that enzyme, uh, receptor, the enzyme will be activated in the systolic, uh, in the systolic, that means inside the cell, depending on their structure and function. So, let's uh, shift it to the slide before, the GS and GI go over to both the activated or inhibitor? They are different types of G-protein. One inhibitory inhibits something, some functional uh, activity. Some they are stimulated that stimulate some a function. When uh, the uh, G protein, the stimulatory one, is the GS stimulated, that mean activity will be a function, certain activity will be stimulated. But inhibitory, it will inhibit the function that um, it's like a host and a host. They are different type with different second messenger with different biological activity according to the others that bind to the different type of receptor. The enzyme linked this response lasts an order of minute to hour. Take more and more time. This is the example of the insulin what receptor. It's four subunit, two alpha and two beta subunit. The most common enzyme linked receptor epidermal growth factor, creative derived growth factor, uh, 
uh, atrial anti-urethic peptide, Lucerin, and other. Possess tyrosine kinase activity as well. This is the enzyme. We said this is enzyme linked receptor. This is the receptor, and the enzyme is tyrosine kinase linked to that receptor when it is activated. The activated receptor, this is the inactive receptor. When, uh, uh, there is two subunit, alpha subunit, and two beta. Uh, and it's linked to tyrosine kinase. The activated receptor phosphorylate tyrosine residue on itself and then other specific protein. After the insulin is binded to the alpha receptor, uh, alpha subunit, it will activate that receptor and tyrosine kinase will be phosphorylated. When it's phosphorylated, it will be activated. Activation means a cascade of transduction of the biological activity. And the phosphorylation can substantially modify the structure of the target protein, thereby acting as a molecular switch. For example, when the peptide hormone insulin binds to of its subunit, the alpha subunit, their intrinsic tyrosine kinase activity causes autophosphorylation of the receptor after binding. This is the inactive form of the receptor. This is the insulin is binding to the alpha receptor. After binding, there will be activation of the receptor by activation of or phosphorylation of tyrosine kinase. Ty phosphorylation of one ty uh, tyrosine kinase will transfer the phosphorylation to other enzyme of the same time or and other functionality uh, or other enzyme uh, around that process. This is what we call signal transduction to produce the certain effect of the uh, insulin in different uh, tissue. For example, uh, in turn, the phosphorylated receptor phosphorylates other peptide or protein that subsequently activate the important cellular signal. After a cascade of functions and phosphorylation, and the, the, we will produce different biological effects because insulin uh, uh, has different functions to make the energy glucose into the cell more and whatever. So there's many different functions for that. Uh, for example, the hormone, uh, insulin hormone, it will be cascade of phosphorylation followed by each other. It will produce a biological activity as a cascade. This cascade of activation results in multiplication of the initial signal, much, much like the, with the G-protein pattern of the signal. So this phosphorylation, followed by other phosphorylation, phosphorylation will produce another phosphorylation. There will be amplification of the signal, and the electrical activity will produce in different part and in the required uh, level. So, this is the inactive, then this will be bind, after that the IOC kinase will activate. So this is why it's called enzyme, which is the IOC kinase link receptor. Then this correlation will call it another protein, another, another, uh, on another cell to the protein, this correlation will transmit from the phosphorylation to another part until the activity is achieved. The most, most of the receptor, they are extracellular, extracellular. But uh, there are also uh, some very, very important intracellular receptors that they are inside the cell. They are rare but very important. The receptor is internally, that means the binding site, all the receptors, they are intracellular. And therefore, the ligand must diffuse into the cell to interact. But the meaning of the ligand must diffuse into the cell to interact with that receptor. That need to be very, very hydrophobic compounds so to enter the cell membrane, then to the nucleus membrane until it reaches the receptor. In order to move across the target cell membrane, the ligand must be sufficient level so that the primary start of these drug uh, ligand receptor complex are transcription factor in the cell. Nucleus. Then it's dividing site where in the cell nucleus. Binding of the ligand with its receptor generally activate the receptor by dissociation from a variety of binding proteins. Here, for example, the steroid, steroid, the hormone, male and female hormone, cortisone, they are all steroids, they are a hydrophobic compound that can enter to the uh, side the cell and, in, uh, uh, and enter the side also. Now, it can enter by the uh, into the cell membrane, into the cytosol, then 
في النكليس ميمبرين انتي اس تي اتش اتس بايندينج سايت اخر اتش 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 بايندينج سايت ان ذا ريسبتر اتش كان بايند سمتايم بين دايمرز تو كونيكت تو كومباوند تو ذا اكتيفيتد ديجر ريسبتر كومبلكس ذا ترانس لو كيت تو ذا نكليس وات از اوفن دايمرز بيفور بايندينج تو ترانسكريبشن Because in the that case there is all genetic material, so these receptors sometimes they are dimer and the transcription, the transcription that means producing of protein from the genes is uh, uh, is started because of this drug um, uh, receptor complex. So drug will enter the cell, then enter the nucleus. Uh, the drug is bound to its receptor and translocate to the nucleus. It will be a dimer, the P double of the receptor drug complex will uh, connect to each other with the genetic material to transcript that compound that needs to produce or to convert the genetic material to a protein and uh, regulate the gene expression and produce the biological activity. The activation or inactivation, this factor causes the transcription of DNA into RNA. The first process converting DNA to RNA and then translation of RNA to a certain protein. The time course of activation of response is our today's. Why our today's? Because it needs a long time to reach its what? Receptor and the receptor to function uh, to uh, produce the uh, biological activity also need converting DNA to RNA, RNA to protein. This all need time. So the activity of hormone it take long time in the body. For example, steroid hormone exert their action on targets by intracellular receptors. Steroid hormone, the uh, one of the example for the intracellular. Uh, okay. Hello, you are.